Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Almighty God, who came to us long ago in the birth of Jesus Christ, be born in us anew today by the power of your Holy Spirit. We offer our lives as home to you and ask for grace and strength to live as your faithful, joyful children always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Friends, welcome to another devotion, uh, another part of our Advent journey. Our theme this week is The Lord is Coming. That's what we celebrate on Christmas and Christmas tide the incarnation, the Word becoming flesh, Jesus of Nazareth, God incarnate. But we also hope and expect God to come into our lives in a different way, a new way this Christmas season. We pray, we walk with Mary, hoping to birth Christ in our world, to share light, to share good news. Understand the imagery, uncomfortable for some of you. Work with it. Be uncomfortable. That's what Christmas is all about. And that's what definitely Advent is about. All right, we have another reading today from The God Who Comes. Again, a wonderful, uh, just Wonderful, wonderful work uh, worth checking out if you're looking for some additional reading this Advent season by Carlo Corretto, two R's, two T's. Personal prayer is the meeting place between the eternal one and me. The blessed sacrament is the visible sign of my covenant with God. That is why I believe in personal prayer and why every day I wait to meet God in the Eucharist. To pray means to wait for the God who comes. Every prayer-filled day sees a meeting with God who comes. Every night which we faithfully put his disposal his full is full of his presence. And his coming and his presence are not only the result of our waiting or a prize for our efforts, they are God's decision based on God's love freely poured out. The coming of God is bound to God's promise, not to our works, not to our virtue. We have not earned the meeting with God because we have served God faithfully in our brethren or because we have heaped up such a pile of virtue as to shine before heaven. God is thrust onward by God's love, not attracted by our beauty. God comes in the moments when we have done everything wrong, in the moments when we have done nothing, in the moments when we have sinned. God bless the reading from Carlo Corretto today. When we pray, we are expecting God to be with us. When we come to worship, we are expecting God to be with us. When we come to this time of devotion, we are expecting God to be with us. When we experience the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, communion, Eucharist, we expect God to be present. When we participate in any of the means of grace, and there are more than I could even count, Anything where we know God will be present in acts of personal holiness, acts of social justice, mercy, and piety. We expect. That's what Advent's about. It's expectation. Prepare the way of the Lord. But here's the wonderful thing. It's not about us. 
God loves us. God pursues us. God wants to be in our lives. And so God comes to us when we least expect it. God comes to us when we are faithful. God comes to us when we are unfaithful. God comes to us when we are a mess. God comes to us when we have everything figured out. God loves us. God's not waiting for us. But we can wait for God. We can open ourselves up. Often there are walls we put up because if we really let the Holy Spirit work in our lives, if we really opened our eyes to what Scripture says, our comfort might become uncomfortable. But what we gain in discomfort is so much better than what we lose. Our scripture reading today comes from Colossians. This is Paul's hymn about Christ. Colossians 1, verse 15. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the one who is first over all creation. Because all things were created by him, both in heaven and on earth, the things that are visible and the things that are invisible, whether they are thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He existed before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the one who is firstborn among the dead, so that he might occupy the first place in everything. Because all the fullness of God was pleased to live in him, and he reconciled all things to himself through him. Whether things on earth or in heavens, he brought peace through the blood of his cross. God bless the reading of the epistle today. Jesus is the image, the visible image of an invisible God. Oh, you know, the, the big... Uh, the big, well, how can you see God? Where is God? How can you know God is real? And, and as Christians, our answer is the person of Jesus Christ allows us to visibly see the character, nature, and expression of the triune God. Creating, redeeming, sustaining. We see that in Jesus peace, hope, joy, and love we see in Jesus, the very essence of who God is, what divinity is, what that great beyond ourselves is, we see in Jesus. That's why we keep reading the Bible. That's why we keep sharing the story. That's why we call it good news, because God tried to interact with humans and, and in one sense, failed because of our stubbornness and waywardness and easily distractedness. So God became one of us, walked a mile in our shoes, walked quite a bit more than that, lived and died like we live and died much worse than most of us will. We worship a God who's been there, who understands us, who loves us, who still gives us freedom to sometimes do terrible things to each other. But who also gives us freedom to make things better. And to expect that things will get better if we hold on to him. Today we come to a time of confession. Asking for forgiveness really means letting go. Letting go of the things that weigh us down, guilt, shame, hurt, and acknowledging the ways we've hurt ourselves and others, and reminding us that we can ask for forgiveness from them. Spend a moment in silence, bringing to God all the things that are weighing you down.
Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Receive that forgiveness. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.